And uh, the other item, if there's a problem with hearing, ringing in the ears, something of that nature, or an abnormality you've picked up on screening for hearing, then we could more specifically do the Weber and the Rene test. Again, we're going to use the tuning fork. And uh, these are crude bedside tests. They're not as accurate as audiometry, but they can give us a little more information uh, in the office. What I'm going to do is have you tell me how you're hearing or feeling the sound or the vibration from my tuning fork. Okay, and I'm just going to put it on your forehead at this point. So what I'd like you to do, close your eyes, and I'm going to put the vibrating tuning fork over the center of your forehead. Can you tell me, do you feel it more on the left or the right or both? Both. So it's both. Okay, and that'd be the normal response for the Weber test. The other test is the Rene test, and this is going to compare um, air versus bone conduction for hearing. We're going to do a similar test with the vibration by your ear. So what I'm going to do is strike the tuning fork. I'm going to put it on the patient's mastoid. And just turn your head a little that way behind her ear. Tell me when the vibration stops. This is bone conduction. No. And it's still vibrating. I can feel it. And if I put it by your ear, do you hear anything there? Yes. And she does. So this shows that air conduction of this sound is better than bone conduction, which is normal. And then I would likewise um, do it uh, testing the other ear with the Rene test. If there is any um, problem with the muscle stretch reflexes, again, we could test all of them with um, the patient seated like this. Uh, if they're leaning towards one side or tensing up, uh, there may be an asymmetry of reflexes, which may be more apparent than real. If the patient's put in a supine position, that eliminates some of the postural uh, problems there, and we could you know, really see if the reflexes are symmetrical or not. If it's difficult to see or elicit a reflex, we can uh, do a maneuver to try and bring them out, and a classic would be the Chandrasic maneuver. So if I'm trying to tap on the knee reflex here and I'm not getting anything, the Chandrasic maneuver can help bring it out. And what I'd like you to do, you could just pull your fingers together like that, okay, and gently pull. And then as I tap on the patellar tendon there, I could elicit the reflex perhaps with this maneuver, whereas I couldn't when she wasn't doing it. Or else you could have her uh, just squeeze her hands or bite down with her teeth if I'm having trouble with the reflexes in the upper limbs. Okay, another part of the examination to look for subtle uh, weakness in the upper limb would be to check for pronator drift. And if you could just hold your arms out in front of you, if your palms up, keep them there, and close your eyes. Now, if there was, this is normal, if there was a subtle weakness maybe in this proximal right arm, what would happen would be the arm would fall, and it also would start pronating or turning in like this. Okay, and that may be a subtlety we'd pick up with this maneuver that we wouldn't pick up with direct um, muscle testing. There are a number of uh, other uh, sensations to test with a sensor examination, especially if we pick up an abnormality or if there's a complaint, or if we're interested in the cortical sensations. If there's a parietal uh, lobe problem, these sensations may be impaired, although what we've tested thus far in the basic exam is normal. So a uh, cotton uh, pin or pain, these basic modalities may be okay. And then we're going to look at these other cortical modalities to see um, if they check out. One of them would be called graphesthesia. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace uh, a number in your hand. And I generally like to trace the number as if the patient were to see it in their hand themselves. Close your eyes for me. Tell me what number this would be. Three. Okay, and likewise, we'll check this hand. Close your eyes. And what number would that be? Eight. Okay, and that's perfectly correct. So that was uh, graphesthesia. Another one would be testing for uh, double simultaneous stimulation. So what I'm going to do in this part, I'm going to test by touching you a left knuckle, the right knuckle, or both at the same time. So I'd like you to tell me if it's left, right, or both. 
close your eyes for me. Where's that one? Right. Right. Left. Both. Okay, now if by touching both she only felt one side, she would be extinguishing on the other side, and that would pertain to a problem with the contralateral um, parietal lobe. The other thing would be uh, two-point discrimination. And there are special calipers where we can actually measure uh, this part of the test. Uh, this could be crudely done perhaps with a, a paper clip that isn't too sharp. And as you would expect, the two tips of the paper clip uh, would be perceived as two separate points at a smaller distance over the fingertip than perhaps over the back. Okay? And we could, um, you could turn your hand over for me and close your eyes. If I spread them out this far, tell me if you feel one or two. Two. And I could bring the distance close, the distance between the points closer together. One. And as I expand. Two. Two. Now we could record how many millimeters apart before she um, perceives it as one. And at checking over other body areas, like over the back, it'd probably be at a greater distance. Um, uh, where she would start perceiving it as one. She, they, the points can get closer together and still be perceived as two over the fingertips, which are very sensitive. The other, um, the other item would be um, stereognosis. And this uh, would be a test of object recognition without the use of vision in the palms. So what we can do is you take an object they're familiar with. Okay, close your eyes for me. I'm going to put something in your hand. And I want you to feel it around and move it, feel its texture, but don't look at it, okay? Here you go. Move that around, and what would that be? A dime. Okay. And she could tell it's a small coin, and right away she's feeling the edge of it to see if it's serrated or not. And keep your eyes closed, and how about on this side? What would that be? A nickel. Okay, so it's a bigger coin and it's not serrated, and she could figure that out. We could test other things like, um, like a key or a paper clip or some other objects to see if she can identify these commonly uh, recognized uh, objects. And that would be testing for stereognosis uh, involving the parietal lobe. Another fine point about the sensory examination when we're checking for uh, light touch or pin is if there seems to be uh, a loss and especially if you're curious or concerned about a spinal cord problem, we really need to check over many dermatomes. So we'd be likewise marching up the patient's body with a cotton wisp or the sharpened end of the uh, a wooden stick over anteriorly and posteriorly, and importantly, even checking around the sacral areas in the buttocks to see if there's a sacral loss of sensation as well. And if the sensation is up to a certain level, pay attention to maybe a nearby, a nearby body uh, landmark that would help us identify which dermatome that would be, and that would help pin this down to a, a spinal cord problem. Uh, one more thing we can do for coordination or cerebellar testing is to look for alternating hand movements. So what I'd ask the patient would be, if you could, on your knee, take your hand and flip the top of the hand and the palm back and forth on your knee, start up like this, and then just go more rapidly. And she does that very well. Um, she accelerates, everything's smoothly done, there's no fumbling around. And if you do the same thing with the other hand, start out slow and gradually build up to a faster pace. Very good. These our additional steps as part of the addenda to the basic neurological screening examination, these are what we would examine and elaborate on if problems were noted from the patient history in a special area or abnormalities were picked up on the screening examination. Um, they're in addition to the basic exam. And that concludes the neurological examination. I'd like to thank Nancy very much for being our patient. Thank you.